Welcome back to Packet Pushers live stream. Today we're sponsored by Dell Technologies and we're looking in to the crystal ball. What's next for DPUs? Now, crystal balls are very important when we talk about business value, or as some people call it, practical business benefits. And really, we don't actually know what DPUs are going to do because they're not here yet. And we need to sort of extrapolate, look in the crystal ball, have a guess. But we can see, um, I, I think we can see a linear progression for how DPUs are going to be adoption. So joining me is Joe White. He's a fellow at Dell. Um, the vision that we wanted to talk here, we've got this slide which talks about the DPU vision edge to core. So what I want to do is take that slide, Joe, and talk about the three different use cases that Dell sees these going into. One of the far edge, near edge, and core. So let's start with the far edge. This is this idea that way out at the edge of the network uh, where, or you've got these I like to think of them as mini data centers. It might be a 5G tower. It might be a factory. You're actually going to have computers in those sites doing more computering than ever before. And you think there's going to be a place. So convince me on that idea that there's a far edge where the DPU is going to be useful. Yeah, there are actually essentially three far edges where it's going to be useful. The first one is uh, the telco far edge. And that telco far edge lets you do layer one and virtual RAN offload and acceleration. So if I want to run my tower more cost effectively, then I can use a DPU for that. The second this part is, this is router replacement. Where before I might have had to go and buy a, a you know router branded or something like that. And really, a lot of pops are just like you know a 10 gig circuit or a 20 gig, you know, 50 gig, 100 gig tail circuit. That's they right. don't need a whole router just to route packets between two interfaces. That's right. What they really need is a stream packet uh, per packet processing. So, mm -hmm. and that's what a DPU does very, very well, right? There are mm -hmm. uh, programmable accelerators and hardware in there that let you accelerate per packet, per packet processing. The second right. one is where I need to do analytics processing or some kind of transformation on a high rate packet stream at a non-telco edge, okay? Right. So if I have a, uh, a store and I have feeds going in and out of that store, I want it isolated, I want it secured, I want, mm -hmm. it, the, I want the data flow coming through there to be analyzed. The third- So analytics, yeah. flow records, um, you might want to be doing encryption at the at the device. So you right. you have a, you know, you look at those you know, when you tap your credit card to pay or you swipe your credit card, that device is encrypted from the time the swipe hits the box. It's not, and what you're saying here is instead of having a VPN controller with you know clear da data traveling in the clear, you can actually encrypt it right in the server at the at the t in the PC where the application processing is being done. That's right. I can encrypt it uh, on site at full rate. But mm -hmm. not just encrypt it, I can encrypt it, encapsulate it, analyze it, um, uh, direct it uh, differently than I would if I was just using stand, you know, standard networking. So I can use a variety of VPC, uh, you know, VPN and overlay technologies um, at that edge site. And then the third place where it's useful at the edge is providing personality flexibility and abstraction mm -hmm. of everything remote. So what if I want to bring more storage into the edge? Do I drive a truck and put the disk there? No, I can just tell my DPU, hey, go go mount this thing for me transparently. Does the server yeah. have to have a whole software change to do that? No, the DPU mm. just isolated and hid that. that. And there are a number of examples like that where the DPU can provide that, that control point, that layering point, and that abstraction point, which lets me um, more flexibly allocate and utilize my resources across a distributed environment. Yeah, really key because it's also part about this replacing custom appliances. So if I've got a firewall doing application firewalling, or if I have a device doing uh, logging of flows and data, I'm doing you know user monitoring. And before I used to use NetFlow records, and well now I can do a lot of that processing, if not all of it, in the DPU. And I don't suddenly need extra boxes or custom boxes. I just need a software app that can be pushed into this DPU hardware that I've got. I think that's the real change for the edge. The idea that you're, you need a server there, a small or a large, you know, whatever, small, medium or large, 
But if you've got a DPU doing the offload for certain things, you can actually get more out of that server than you could otherwise. You get much less hardware in the footprint at the edge of that, that pop at the edge. So let's talk about near edge. This is one where I'm a little bit gonna gonna bite you a bit harder. But in the near edge here, you're talking about disaggregation and offloading of the network. What do you mean by near edge, first of all? Is that campus or WAN or both? Near edge would be like a, a regional data center where your points of presence all aggregate to use uh, telco terminology. Uh, it can also be your uh, colo resident um, uh, data center. Um, it could be one of your small satellite uh, data centers. Uh, mm. It could also be the central hub of large commercial infrastructure. And part, the key, one of the keys here is, so again, I get the same value I get at the far edge. I get that yeah. flexibility, the isolation. I get the ability to, uh, deliver packets at rate um, and the, do processing at rate. I also get an independent mm -hmm. place to do analytics and telemetry and deliver those telemetry feeds. And again, I can pre-process and customize the telemetry feeds much more easily than if I'm trying to do it for my Linux or my Azure or my uh, other OS. Uh, mm. Having that independent source of telemetry is very valuable. Um, and I can do true local networking. So yeah. do I want to do um, uh, a NAT function plus a load balancing function plus a uh, redirection function plus a uh, VPC in cap function? I mm. can do all of those at rate in the DPU because I can take advantage of the um, embedded packet network packet processing like you would have on a switch plus programmable pipelines and that combination plus embedded cores uh not embedded arm cores but pipeline embedded cores give me a, a wide variety of ways of dealing with network gateways yeah and, yeah. and then i can also do my storage offload so the one thing we haven't talked about much is so, so storage how, offload. So, uh, we talked about stuff your storage offload in the first yeah. section. I just want to call right. back to that. But yeah. the interesting part here is when do you think that will happen? I know we can, and I know we've got VMware's vSAN, which is a very popular storage capability, well suited to the edge, far edge, near edge. Um, storage people, however, are very resistant to change. Do we think storage is something that you'd put in the pitch to the execs today? Or would you say, we think this is coming downstream? Do you think VMware's got a story there that's going to work with, you know, the Pensandos and the and the, the Bluefield DPUs out there? Yeah. So uh, there's definitely a story that works. And the story is I'm offloading and isolating my block storage uh, access. Mm. So if I have NVMe over Fabric, I can offload that uh, all of the NVMe for fabric operations so it looks like the DPU is presenting a local NVMe device to the CPUs. Yeah. I could integrate with uh, my container storage interface. I could integrate with my all my block storage and uh, SAN fabrics. Um, and yeah. I've even seen some weird ones where they're talking about Ethernet connected SSDs. And you can start to just lay your storage straight down on those SSDs with no intermediate storage controller. Now that's a bit, that's a bit of a thing, but maybe that'll come in a, in the longer term, you know, five to 10 years out. Yeah. So again, that's just, again, that's offloaded block storage access. So my mm. back end could be a software defined storage array, like a PowerFlex. It could be a mid range storage array, like a power store. Um, mm -hmm. It could be independent. Uh, drives just sitting on the network. Uh, it mm. could be a chassis of drives um, that uh, I access across the network. And the, yeah. the key here is that DPU hides the details of what that is from the host OS. It gives so me the that. host OS doesn't see any of that, but it, and that's uh, why the SCN sees, control. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sees that's why the software controller is so important to manage right. what's running on the DPU. So, in a funny kind of way, you want to be much more conscious of what's running on the DPU and the SDN software than you actually do about the DPU hardware. It's the functions and the software apps that you run, which yeah. is pretty much how we work on servers today, anyway. That's correct. And the hardware differentiation comes in at how good a job they do at the various. Uh, abstraction mm. and offload functions. So how many ARM cores off the DPU itself does it take me to mm -hmm. run my storage offload? 
Now, uh, the last topic I wanted to hit with you is the concept of bare metal. This is not something that's been I've seen discussed too often with DPUs, but you know, normally we have the BMC, the baseboard management controller, which is yeah. you know the the eye drac in terms that's of the right. Dell. And that's how you manage the bare metal. And it's right down in the guts of, but we're also seeing people talk about using the DPU to either supplement that or to replace that and therefore give you much better bare metal provisioning in your clouds, in your on-prem, in your off-prem. Is that a realistic dream? Are we really going to be able to see a portable bare metal implementation where you can use the the DPU to actually drive bare metal deployments of, of software so we can get in upgrades, deploy, get new hypervisors in, put a server in a rack, off we go. Absolutely. And the reason for that, again, is because that DPU can present fully virtualized remote components to the local server as though they were local components and swap those in and out at will. Mm. I could represent someone else's GPU as though it were your GPU. Very powerful right. idea. Uh, you, your boot disk, you can boot from SAN through the DPU. Let the DPU deal with all of the protocol annoyances. You don't need to load SAN drivers to boot from the SAN because That's the right. DPU is doing... I'm just to dive into the details there. It That's just right. presents the NVMe and it looks like the volume on the storage arrays inside the machine. And so that's for bare it. metal provisioning, that is just so much awesome because you can just bear, you know, all that sort of stuff. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, what I wanted to do in this section is hopefully give people a realization that if you're putting applications down on the on the CPU, on the on the DPU and offloading them, then all of a sudden you've got a whole bunch of functions that are doing stuff that's never been done before. You think that's basically what we got over, Joe? Uh, absolutely. And okay. the industry ecosystem is uh, uh, got a number of efforts to try to bring all this together and build a real ecosystem out of it. So right. again, we have we have the VMware deployments, then we also have Open Programmable Infrastructure Consortium. Um, that's trying to do the same thing for uh, open environments. Um, and then we have uh, Dash, which is uh, looking at cloud gateway function definitions. And um, Dash stands for Disaggregated APIs for Sonic uh, Hosts. And it's tightly coupled to the, to the networking mm. and kind of the WAN gateway offload. Um, I, it, it there's so much happening in this space because I do actually follow a lot of the sites that you're yeah. talking about and there's a lot of software being written and there's a lot of arguing. I mean, uh, evolution, I think, is is what the, the fancy word for it. No, there's a, lot um, of argue, there's a lot of arguing about what shape these things should be because, again, it's in its infancy. Yeah. You were talking about is, when yeah. we would start to see this. So, again, we've already started to see some of it and we we yeah. we see the value in the, in the big clouds. We have the VMware yeah. release. You know, Dell plus VMware has released uh, Monterey, um, we will start to see an expansion of the ecosystem and sort of a, a an opening of the ecosystem for other environments. Yeah, uh, yeah in, in, the in thing the, I wanted to get out when I was talking to today is, yeah, I wanted to get a very narrow focus on things that I could do now, not things yeah. that I would, you know, wait 10 years for. But we've also painted a vision, hopefully over the sessions today, of this is how it is and then this is where it's going and you've got to get out there and track it. So this is, is early technology, no question, but there's certainly a vision for the future. Well, thanks very Absolutely. much to everybody for attending yeah. our sessions today. Thanks for joining in. Thanks to Joe and Paul for joining us and, and giving us the benefit of their advice. Thanks very much to Dell for sponsoring the Today Show, which gives us the possibility to be here doing this. For more information, if you head on over to delltechnologies.com slash smartdpu, You'll be able to get on the website. There's a whole bunch of papers and stuff like that. If you want to get in contact with anybody, don't hesitate to send us questions. Use the Packet Pushers follow-up page, packetpushers.net slash FU. You can send us and we'll make sure people get in contact with you. If you've asked a question today in the chat Q&A, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks very much for listening to the Packet Pushers and we'll see you again real soon.